As a kid, I remember playing this fun game with my brother over at my uncle's house where we'd spin a top and try to knock down little pins. The game was called Skittles. Now, I don't know when it was invented, but I do know that in 1929, the Berea College in Kentucky started making them in their woodcrafting classes, and they actually still do to this day. Over the years, some other companies have changed the board layout and modified things quite a bit to make their own versions. But for nostalgic reasons, I much prefer the original design. So in this video, I drew up my own design using the same board layout as the original, and I'm hoping that once I build it, it'll be just as fun as it was when I was a kid. This is going to be a good one. Let's get to it. So first things first, I need to start off this build by making the base. Everything else can be built on or around it, but the base needs to come first. And for that, I decided to go with a piece of 3 quarter inch birch veneered plywood. I changed the blade in my table saw to a high tooth count blade that'll give me a clean cut on plywood. And then I just cut the piece down to size. With that trimmed down to its final dimensions, I could lay out where all the pin locations and the point values should be. These are the spots where you'll set up the pins when you're playing the game. It might seem like it's way too early to be doing this now, but once we get the walls and the inserts built and installed onto the base, it'll be much more difficult to do it then. Also, I wanted to do this in a way where the markings would be perfectly flat and flush with the surface, so it doesn't interfere with the spinning top. I thought about doing inlays or epoxy fills, but in the end, I found it easier just to use my laser to burn in some outlines for the markings. And it worked great. Things remained perfectly flush, and I could barely even feel where the circle was burned in or where the point values were put on. Afterwards, I sanded things smooth to get rid of my pencil marks and any smoke stains and then blew off the dust to get it ready for finish. Then I went ahead and I put on three coats of a standard polyurethane to give it some protection and to really give it a smooth surface for the game to be played on. And once it was done, I could set the base aside for now and get to work on milling up some rough cherry for the rest of the pieces. Once I had the boards picked out, I needed to set up my miter station wings so that I could cut these things down to a more manageable size. Then with the boards rough cut to length, I could plane them down to their final thicknesses. Then with all the boards perfectly flat, I used the joiner to put one good edge on each piece. And referencing that good edge, I trimmed each board down to their final widths over at the table saw. and then again to length over at the miter saw. And where I could bunch up multiple pieces together, I did. This ensured that they all got cut to the exact same length. Now for joinery, I'll be using rabbits and dados. This will just make it super easy to assemble and it'll help keep things square, which is pretty important for this piece. So the two long side pieces of the outer frame get a rabbit cut in on each end. Next, I adjusted my blade stack so that it would give me a perfect one half inch dado. And once I had my test pieces fitting right, I went ahead and I cut in all the remaining dados in all the other pieces. Now with that done, I could draw a picture of E.T. on the center of the front piece and then poke some holes in his face over at the drill press. This cutout is going to be where you launch the spinning top from when you play the game. And using a jigsaw, I could remove the rest of the material. And then I could refine the shape and smooth things out a bit using a set of files. Next, I added a curve straight down the center of it on the table saw. And then I could add a round over with the trim router. And 
And since cherry likes to burn even if you look at it, I used my shoe shining skills to make it look good again. Now it's time to glue up the outer frame. And this was quite a stressful glue up too. I had the base clamped down firmly to the bench so it was perfectly flat and it wouldn't move. Then I added a bead of glue to the bottom edge and to the rabbits of the sides. I flipped up the pieces, put them together, and then clamped things up in both directions. Afterwards, once things had plenty of time to dry, I could remove all the clamps and get ready for the next step. Since the outer sides were just glued onto the edges of the plywood base, I figured it would be a good idea to reinforce that joint by adding some screws along the bottom edges. And to hide the screws and dress things up a bit, I glued in some walnut plugs to fill the holes and then I cut off the excess with a flush trim saw. Plus, this gave me a great opportunity to drive in a flathead screw. At this point, I could flip the whole thing upside down and sand off any glue squeeze out. And in the locations where there were some little gaps, I could mash in some glue and then continue to sand over it. This just mixes the sawdust with the glue and fills those cracks so they completely disappear. The next step was to create a template that has the shape of the doorway cut out. This will be for all the openings in all of the room dividers that the spinning top can pass through. I figured an easy way to make sure that they're all identical is to just make a template. This means I only have to worry about making the template perfect, instead of having to cut each one by hand and struggling to make each one the exact same. Once I had the shape drawn, I could cut it out and refine the shape with some files to get it perfect. Then I just position it on all the room divider pieces so that it's centered, and I trace the cutout onto the piece. At the bandsaw, I rough cut out the inside of the shape, staying way on the inside of the lines. Now this doesn't have to be pretty at all. It just has to be somewhere near the line so that the router bit isn't trying to take off too much in the next step. Then, I could use the painter's tape and CA glue trick to temporarily secure the template down onto the piece and line up the edges where I traced it earlier. And with a flush trim bit in the router, I could simply run the bearing along the edge of the template and it makes the shape into a piece exactly identical. Then I could just pop the pieces apart and repeat the same process eight more times for all the remaining doorways that I need. And once all the doorways were cut, I could add a tiny round over to the inside edges. Then I used my gut vise to hold each piece while I sanded each of the pieces smooth. And once they were, they were ready to go in. I put some glue on the edges, put the ends into the dados, and then pounded on it like an angry troll until it was seated all the way down. Then with the big room dividers in place, I put in the smaller ones in the same way. And I still chose to pound on it with my fists even though my rubber mallet was on the wall right behind me. Now since the center dividers were only supported on one side, I put a bead of CA glue along the bottom. I put them in place and I verified that they were square. Next up came adding a round over to all of the top edges of the entire game board. I just used my trim router and I went around each piece. Afterwards, I gave everything a really good sanding. I got rid of the burns and smoothed out any rough patches. Then after blowing off all the dust, the game board was done. Next up was making all of the little pins. Now I don't have a lathe in my shop, but in a previous video I showed you how I designed and built a drill powered jig for my CNC that lets me make cylindrical shapes. It's pretty cool. So if you have a CNC and want to be able to have it make round objects, you can make this for your machine too. Plans are on my website. I load up some stock into the jig, get the drill going, and I kick off the machine. And about 15 minutes later, I had this little pin made. To sand it smooth, I just kept it in the jig and I spun it super fast while working my way up through the various grits. Then once it was smooth, I could pop it out and take it over to the bandsaw where I could nip off the bottom. 
Then using the excess at the top to keep it square, I could hold it against the sander to make the bottom perfectly flat. And with that done, I could nip off the top and then round that over. And just like that, one pin done. 14 more to go. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel that this project is severely lacking enough unnecessary walnut. So I grabbed a piece to make the spinner out of. I started with a two and a half inch hole saw and I cut a circle. Then I banged it out of there and I glued in a dowel rod into the hole. And to soften the edges, I held it at an angle against the belt sander and I let it turn freely in my hands. I applied very gentle pressure and after a bit, it evenly sanded the sharp edges off. Now this thing is ready for finish. And for that, I'm going to be using the Binuba wax from Bumble Shoots. This is a hard wax finish that has absolutely zero harmful fumes and it's super easy to work with. You simply wipe it on and let it soak into the wood. Then once it's had some time to start to cure, you can come back and buff off any excess. It leaves the surface of the wood absolutely glass smooth and it protects it with a hardened barrier. I've used this on several projects now, and I'm just thrilled at how well it preserves the color over time. If you want to try it out, use the code FISHER10 to save 10% over at bumbleshoots.com. Okay, now it's actually time to test this thing out and make sure the top even spins. I got a little bit of string from one of my neighbor's sweaters and I wrapped it around the shank of the spinner. I loaded it into the launcher and I gave the string a tug. Whoa! This thing's going crazy. It's all over the place. Oh, it even made it into the back corner. Can it make it into the center room? Uh, nope. Man, that was awesome. And speaking of awesome, I'm so glad I chose to use Cherry for this project. I just love how the boards turned out looking and the character that they have. The laser engraving was a perfect choice for this too. It's totally flat and super legible on the plywood. And thank goodness for my CNC lathe jig. It made creating these little pins a cinch. And what's great is that since the robot made them, I know that they're all exactly the same shape. The top? Well, when I was making it, I honestly didn't think it would even spin. But boy, was I wrong. It hopped around and ricocheted all over the place. It worked wonderfully. All in all, this was a great project, and a pretty simple build, too. But enough gawking at it, right? Let's actually play the game. I hauled it out, and I placed it down where it's going to live, and I just made sure that it was perfectly level, which is pretty important for this game. If it's leaning towards any one direction, then the top will sort of drift that way every time. So here's how you play. There's 15 pins on the board. The two closest to the launch area are both worth negative 10, so you kind of want to avoid those. And the first big area has five pins worth five points each, and in the next big room, they're worth 10 points each. The back corners are 50 points, and if you can sneak the top into the back center room, there's a 100-point pin in there. Games can be played to 300 or 500 or... If your neighbor's beating you, just say that the game's played to a million, and then nobody wins, and he can just go back home with his frayed sweater. This is such a fun game. I have fond memories of playing it as a kid, and now I've got my very own to enjoy. And hey, if you'd like to try making this game for yourself, I'll have very detailed step-by-step -step instructions available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Hey, I sure hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, be sure to give it a like and add a comment below. And share it with a friend. That would really help me out a lot. And if you're new here and you think I've earned it, consider subscribing to the channel. I've got a lot of other videos that I'm sure you'll like as well. Thanks so much for watching. And until next time, take care, and I'll see you later. This isn't square. I'm going to have to cut a new one. Oh, crap-tastic. Oh, crap. Oh, this is going in crooked. This thing is... Ugh, these screws are the worst. Ow! I just hit my thumb. Nice.
That really hurt. All right, I gotta hold it a little bit stronger. All right, send it. Negative 15. That is like one of the worst things you can get.